Okay, so let's look at taking these two progressions now, 1, 4, 1, and 1, 5, 1, and stringing them back together. So we're going to stick around and see. I like to stick around and see for explaining things just because it doesn't have accidentals, so it's a little easier to understand. So now anytime I'm, I'm improvising at the piano and I'm practicing voicings, I find it's actually useful to try to shape the the practice any anything that you play here pretend it's like a little piece of music and actually try to make it sound good think about your dynamics think about your articulations think about the phrasing of things so let's start with So we just did a 1-4-1, one, one, but I'm holding the bass, and I'm going to do 1-5-1. One, one. So all I'm doing here, and I'll start to write this out, put the treble clef there, bass clef, connect them. I'm holding out a bass note. Let's put a time signature so we can see. Holding out this bass note here. I'm actually playing octaves. So I've got two C's. And I'm just playing quarter notes in the right hand. you can see that one two three four just like that now I like to practice writing this out quickly and accurately and then here as I talked about before, I'm actually holding out this bass note. But the voices are just changing a little bit here. You got E moving up to F, and you got G moving up to A. So let's see. Try to get this to fit. And then this is just back down. Now when you're sketching, you can use shorthand. And sometimes if I'm repeating a thing, and it's really obvious to me what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here, I'll just write a line following the chord. That way I don't have to write the whole chord out every single time. And then same with if I do another measure here. I can just repeat that with the the repetition sign just like that so here we've got our first phrase there I, I added a little bit of kind of melody to the bass and I did it like this G, an eighth note right there. It's not super clear yet. And then just. Now for over here, what I'm doing is I'm doing a, a G in the bass, and I'll just write 8VB. 
You'll find I like to do a lot of shorthand for things if it's if it takes a lot of extra effort to write a bunch of like you know ledger lines or to copy a thing multiple times when you're sketching in particular you can save a lot of time try to get your idea down quickly while it's still fresh in your head but here I've got G chord so that's or actually you know what? I think I I didn't do that quite yet if I remember what I played was just a straight up one five one. So I'll do C again. Dun, three, four, and then G. And I suppose we could do the ledger lines. So every time I like to think of what an octave is in ledger lines, there's three ledger lines. And if the top note is has a line going through it, then the bottom note is open and vice versa. The bottom note has a line going through it and the top note is going to be open. Just a little shorthand for my brain. So we had so we got the four C chords and we've got the G chord here. back to C. And we do that for two measures. We'll just go ahead and put a double line at the end. Okay, so what we've done here is we've written out a complete phrase. I don't know if we can see it here. I'm working on a getting a better camera rig set up for my notation. But for now, this will have to do. The, one of the big benefits of doing things from musical you know, um, patterns or progressions that you know well is that it takes care of a lot of the mental load that is required for being able to take what you hear in your head and getting it down on paper. So not only do I know what this sounds like before I play it, I know it's a common musical object, but I also know how to write it down. And then with 151, with a half half note over here. So you can see how I, I've got this repeated a couple times, but if it changes, I think I missed these octaves. Learning to write what's in your head and uh, or hear what's in your head and properly write it down onto paper is a skill that takes time to develop, but this is a great way to develop it. You, you practice playing something, thinking of something, having to remember it, transcribe it down. If you can't remember what it was exactly, go back to the keyboard, try to play it again, try to get it accurate. And then from here, you have a lot of flexibility. I mean, we can we can look at these notes and then we could come up with a melody And I, all I was really doing was, you know, picking different notes. And it's really all part of this chord anyway. And you'll find as we uh, get deeper into composition, you start to really play around with, you know, what's going on there.
all I'm doing here is now connecting these these uh, chords with passing tones but you'll find that a lot of melodies are not that much more than just chord tones and passing tones and some of the more advanced types of ornamentation or advanced non chord tones um, they're they're much easier to kind of control when when you keep things simple at first and you write melodies that focus on chord tones and connecting those chord tones as you go <laughs> 